Hello, and welcome to a video that I've been excited to make, but kept putting off. This will be the third video in this series. I am still quite new to this hobby, and I am continuously learning new things as I observe the life within the glass box. This video is not going to be an in-depth care guide, but a short look into my beginner's thoughts and experiences to give some answers to those initial questions I had about the pets I am keeping. Today's video is about Neocaridina shrimp. I've been keeping these shrimp for just over six months now. However, I personally don't have any experience with Caridina shrimps. Neos are a dwarf shrimp that come in many different color morphs. I'm sure many, like myself, have heard of cherry shrimp at least once before. These red colored shrimps are some of the most common. However, their natural coloration is green-brown and fairly translucent. My first Neocaridina were some blue diamond shrimp, with a deep blue color. Or at least they were labeled blue diamond at the local fish store they were purchased at. They can even be multicolored, or one color with a colorless section in the middle. These multicolored shrimps are known as Riley or Riley shrimps. I Riley don't know the proper pronunciation. At first, I didn't realize just how many colors there were. Using blue as an example, there's blue jelly, blue velvet, blue dream, blue diamond, and it goes on, which can get kind of confusing at times as to which is which. On top of this, there are shrimp braids as well, but I only know enough to get a rough guess as to what my shrimps could be. Females generally show stronger coloration than males. Feeding shrimple, they graze on the biofilm and algae in your tank, and most of the time they will just eat what the fish is miss and clean up the mess. I also feed a few shrimp pellets or a piece of algae wafer every couple days. and they love blanched veggies like cucumber. In my opinion, it's easier to overfeed than underfeed, so keep that in mind. I do keep my shrimps housed with other fish, I have a colony of blue and wild type shrimps with some ember tetra, and I keep my red shrimps with my harlequin rasboras. There's always the concern that shrimps will get eaten, especially any shrimplets. However, so far in my experiences, neither my tetras or rasbora bother the shrimp. I had an issue with some guppy fry harassing shrimp recently, but that's been it so far. Assassin snails and autosynclus are shrimp friendly as well. I can't really speak for any other species of fish just yet, however. Just keep in mind, most fish that can fit a shrimp in its mouth will. I was a little surprised at just how shrimpy these guys are as well. I knew they were going to be small, however my largest shrimps are only around 3 centimeters or just over an inch in length, not including antenna. Males are generally smaller with mine only being around 2 centimeters for most of the mature males. Females also have a rounder abdomen. When it comes to maturity with these shrimp, they grow quite quickly too. I purchased shrimps that were only a few weeks old, and within a couple months, they had already reached maturity and were starting to breed. This is where I decided to get a few more shrimp to experiment with breeding further and learn more about the colorations. Breeding these shrimp is quite easy, and honestly doesn't take much effort or input. As long as parameters are good and consistent, they will just continue breeding on their own. Once fertilized, a female will carry the eggs for about a month before the shrimps hatch and are released. 
These shrimplets do not have a larval state and hatch into a miniature version of the adults, growing with each molt. But what actually happens if you mix colors? If mixed colors happen to breed, there is a high chance most of these shrimplets will come out wild colored and lose most if not all of the color of the parents. This can make some neat colors too though. Let me know in the comments if you would like me to make a more in-depth video on the breeding cycle of Neocaridinas. I've read a lot of things about shrimp being very fragile and delicate, but I would say as a beginner to the aquarium hobby, I've had quite good luck with my shrimps. I regularly test my water and keep it consistent with weekly water changes and I don't seem to have any issues, other than when a shrimp I purchased had some face worms. As a beginner, would I recommend keeping Neocaridina shrimps? While I feel I've had some pretty good luck, that's not to say I haven't lost some shrimp either. If you are also just starting out, I'd recommend starting with some cherry shrimps or even wild type shrimps to learn, as they can be quite a bit cheaper, which helps if a mistake does happen and you lose some. They make great additions to nanotanks and aquascapes, or look great just on their own too. This is some of the answers I found through experience to the questions I had when initially purchasing my shrimp. Hopefully I've helped answer some questions you might have had too. And if you are thinking about getting into the shrimp hobby, what are you waiting for? Thanks for watching. Have a shrimptacular day.